In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to solve a parallel circuit problem. So just like most circuit problems, you wanna make sure you understand what's going on conceptually, and that will make much, everything much easier mathematically. So when you're doing the math parts of this, they are gonna be fairly simple if you understand the concepts pretty well. So in a parallel circuit, you have multiple loops as opposed to a series circuit that has a single path for the electrons to go on. So as the electrons move out of the power source, they may either go through this loop, this loop, or this one. So as the electrons get pushed out of the power source, um, they are all gonna be flowing through this part. You see, this is where all the colors are overlapping because that's where you have your total current. And then once it reaches this junction over here, they're gonna split up into the purple, blue, and red branches. And then as they go around those, they're gonna loop around meet up again over here where we're going to have our total current um, going back into the power source. So because the electrons only go through one particular branch or one loop, they use the same amount of voltage for each branch, which is basically your total of 10 volts. Um, the second thing is the current splits, which I already talked about before. So once they pass this point over here, they're going to split up into this purple, blue and red branch. And lastly, when you find the total resistance, um, you basically have to sum up the inverse of each of the resistors in order to get your RT eventually. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, when doing these types of problems, it is always helpful to work in a particular order. So we're going to talk about voltage drops first. Do the current second and then do the resistance third. Okay, now there's some different orders you can work it out in, and you'll see as I work through this, um, you may like the order that I solve this in, or if you find another order that works for you, um, then definitely go for it. So for if we're looking at each one of these, we know each one of these has the same voltage drop, and we know the total voltage drop is 10 volts, and the electrons don't need to move through multiple resistors, so they're gonna have the same voltage drop across each of the resistors, which is 10 volts. So I'm going to go ahead and label that 10 volt drop. All right, now if I want to find the current for each of those branches, I can go ahead and take Ohm's law and I'm going to rearrange it a little bit. And if I take voltage divided by resistance, that gives me the current. So let's go ahead and find the current through each one of these branches. All right, so I did uh, voltage divided by resistance for each one of the three. Uh, we know we had a total voltage drop of 10 across each of the branches. We have our individual resistances written on our diagram. So we just divided the two and got our resistance. And if we want the total resistance, or excuse me, the total current, we can go ahead and add up those three. And that will give us a total of 17 amps. So you're gonna see that total current over here and over here when it is entering or leaving the power source. Like I said before, where you see those three different lines overlap, that's where all the charges have to move through. Therefore, that's where you see that total current. All right, now for our final thing, we are going to solve for the total resistance, also known as the equivalent resistance. There are two ways you can solve for it. Um, the first way is easier if you have all the information you need, but you might not necessarily have all of this information. So if we take Ohm's law again and rearrange it, then it is R equals 
v over i. Okay, so if you basically cross multiply these two, they're going to switch spots, and then r equals v over i. So if we take the total voltage drop and the total current, then that will give us the total resistance. And we already know that the voltage drop is 10 volts. And we know the total current is 17 amps. And if we put that in decimal form, it comes out to 0 0.59 if we round it off. Okay, so that way is definitely easier if you know the total voltage and the total current. Now, the way that's a little bit more universal is using this rule over here um, where you add up the inverses and that equals the inverse of the total resistance. And that way might be a little bit better because you don't rely on any other information besides the resistors that you see in front of you. So let's go ahead and work that out and see where that takes us. So if we take the inverse of all of our resistances and add them up, we have 1 over 2 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 5. And you don't need to do this, but if you wanted to find the lowest common denominator, which is 10, then you could add these up by hand. Um, and you don't have to do that. You can go ahead and put that into your calculator and get the decimal. Um, that works too. So when you add those up, you have 5 plus 10 plus 2, um, which equals 17. And then you have 10 on the bottom. So it's 17 over 10, and I'm going to go ahead and write over here, 17 over 10 equals, remember that equals the inverse of the total resistance. And then what you can do is you can do a quick little cross multiply, and then that will make RT equal to 10 over 17. Okay, which is the exact same thing that we got over here. All right, so what you can do is you can go ahead and add up these fractions manually, or you can also put them into your calculator and add them up. And then in that case, you would get 1.7. So if you were to do that in the calculator, then you would get 1.7 equals 1 over RT. And similarly to what we just did a little bit ago, you can go ahead and do a cross multiplication here. And then RT is 1 divided by 1.7, and that gives me 0.59, okay, which is the same thing that I got over here. Okay, So you can use either method. As I said, this one is definitely a little bit easier if you have everything you need. Uh, this way is a way that you'll definitely need to uh, master because you'll have to use it in different ways with different types of circuits, especially a compound circuit. So the two ways you can do it is you can go ahead and add them up manually and then flip your fraction um, as we did over here. And then if you have some fractions that are a little bit harder to work with, or you're just worried that you're going to make a mistake doing the work manually, you can go ahead and plug it into your calculator, find that sum, and that sum in your calculator can be cross multiplied with that RT. And then one divided by the sum of that number, in this case, the 1.7, will give you your final answer of 0 0.59 ohms. I hope that was helpful in helping you understand and solve a parallel circuit problem. Thank you for watching and listening.